Hello everyone, today we're going to work on this locomotive, it's a Backman 060 and we're going to convert this to DCC and sound. Also, um, I'm not crazy about that paint scheme, so I think I'm going to do some, uh, some changes to that. At any rate, uh, there's going to be lots of work needed on that. Oh, I can see when he did his uh, quote-unquote custom painting, he got the wheels painted. That's not good. I encourage you, when you go online and look at trains, to buy this version. Uh, this version used to be a 262. That's okay, we don't need those parts. Used to be a 262, and you want them that have only um, two gears. Do not buy the ones that have three white gears. Those uh, usually don't run very well. But uh, these, the newer type, are pretty good. Also, there's no uh, there's no coupler pocket. So that, we're gonna have to work on that. So there's lots to work, um, lots of work to do on this. We have to repaint it also. So I have to repaint it, convert, clean it, convert it to DCC and sound. So we've got our work cut out for us. So before I start converting it to DCC and sound, I have to make sure 100% that it's a good runner. So I always do that on DC because it's simpler. I'm going to start by removing the tender from the engine. That's just going to make it easier to handle and easier to work pretty easy these backmans these little tenders have been around for a while i don't really like them that much but uh once i get them through my process they actually run pretty good i'm gonna get rid of some of this stuff here it's uh pretty much what it looks to be in decent shape it's pretty much what i expected uh, let's go see if it even runs like that Let's just see what happens when I put power on. So it kind of wants to go. Not bad. I'll just increase it a little bit. So there's hope, but it needs work. All right, that's a good place to start. Obviously, this engine didn't bring much uh, at the auction. In fact, the decoder that I'm going to put in is more expensive than the engine by quite a margin. At any rate, this is the uh, Excel systems. So you just type in on your browser, uh, Excel systems, DCC will take you right to his website. And there's all the instructions there, how to put it on. There's quite a bit of stuff you can do to this. In fact, you'll see, when I first started, it doesn't sound very good. But you can change the bell type and the chuff sound. That's really important to do. And the chuff type is 0 to 10. So there's 10 different, uh, 10 different chuff sounds that you can have. And also the chuff rate. And a whole bunch of other CVs you can change. So I'll be having a little bit of fun with that. And here's your instruction on how to, to wire it. So this decoder, if you look at it carefully, you will see it does not have a blue wire for the, uh, the positive of the LEDs. Now, when I did my first one like this, I called the guy and he told me, don't worry, just hook it up to um, the, black, uh, the black wheel pickup. I was like, that guy's crazy. But uh, in fact, he uh, knew exactly what he was doing. He's probably pretty good at DCC and that worked perfectly. So that's just good to know. My first tip I'm giving you uh, right off the start. So this is your entry level uh, steam engine, usually the first one everybody gets because it's affordable. 
and there's a bunch of starter sets using this but it's pretty detailed look at that the, the reverse gear is there this is your uh, um, steam dome this is the steam dome I don't know what this is maybe it's a second sand. this is the sand dome and the bell there's no um, there's no there's pop valve there it's pretty detailed there's no generator for the light which is okay because the light doesn't work so uh, we'll be we'll be fixing that today I don't know if I have an extra shell for a generator I might have to skip that all together so on this side the valve gear is set up properly this should be down like this but on this side you can see it's up so that's uh, definitely not good so this is a little bit of care and attention you have to put in when you're putting the locomotive back together so this screw on the steam dome is um, the first thing to remove it's going to change out the screwdriver I'm going to keep my bubble wrap paper around because that will trap uh, it will trap all my parts which is very necessary it's a rather simple engine there we'll do the tender last because that's pretty simple the tender is pretty much like a freight car now there's a version of this that's a switcher and it's got just a um, very small tender like a switcher would have that just goes almost straight to the paint shop and then this screw will hold the cross head and the pilot beam and this screw holds down the motor this little plastic thingy is good to have and then this little spring here that does absolutely nothing, I think it's going to go away. Hey, I found a, f found a free coupler pin. It was uh, attracted by the magnet. You get a free coupler pin. Look at that. Life's good. I don't think I'm going to put uh, micro trains on this. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do for couplers. That's something I can work on later. I'll just get rid of this spring because it does absolutely nothing. Then I suppose I will work it uh, from the bottom. Just remove this screw. This screw here and this screw here and this screw here. They're different size screws, so that's why I remove them one at a time and I keep them uh, in order. I always do. So I put the, uh, the first one I remove, I put it further. Just like my big boy video where I could go back and look at what I did. It's nice to have the videos. Uh, Jimmy at DIY Digital Railroad, he made a video last week about what happens when you're gone to your model railroad. I thought that was a bit dark, but uh, it still made me think, you know, like it's uh, the first year, you think about your goals and all that. still made me think because, you know, I'm glad to have these videos, you know, for my family. You'll be able to go back and watch that. So that is a good thought, good positive thought. My family can go back and watch my videos years down the road. So I think I can just lift this out without too much, uh, too much problem from uh, from uh, from anything around. Now there is a timing to these. But it's not really uh, something we have to worry about right now. So this little hook for the trailing truck there, I'm going to put that in the uh, not needed pile. But I'm going to keep uh, this plate. So all that's going to get clean. There's a little bit of extra grease, which is not, it's not a big problem. But I come in with my um, 
my microfiber rag and I'll just wipe this out. It's not, not a problem. This is okay. It's from the factory. Same thing with all this grease. The grease from the factory actually looks good. I don't think I'm going to make any changes to that. So I have to release the valve gear from that. i got some grease on my finger. I tried to, to limit the grease as much as I can. They put way too much at the factory. I know what they're thinking. You know, they're thinking we'll put a, a lifetime's worth which is all okay, but all the parts are there, all the parts are present. I know I can fix this. But how I do it, I will always start by removing the valve gear completely. And I'll run it without its valve gear. When there's a problem with the engine, I always start by um, adding a part one at a time, I add all the parts one at a time until the problem comes up and then I know which part causes the problem and then the two main rods, they come with the number one uh, driver and that's it, and then all my valve gear is loose and I can remove it you can see there's a little bit of dirt there so that's it, when you um, when you put the thing back together, you, you use more care and attention than the people at the factory. So that will mean that your engine is running uh, smoother. So that go, the pilot beam goes in first and then the steam chest. And then you have to wiggle these four bars, wiggle them around. wiggle these four bars this is I'll tell you this is all good detail from a, you know your starter set engine I'm very satisfied with the level of detail anyways this is what it should look like at this point so this I probably just wash with a little soap and water and my toothbrush same with um, the gears here I'll just wash them. They don't look too terribly dirty. So I'll just wash them with some soap and water. And then the frame. I like this frame. It, it Still you can see the, the extra detail. You know, the, this is the power reverse. And then that's the lower part of the air compressor. It's all good. If you want a small engine and you don't want to pay too much money, uh, I'm gonna split the frame. I'm gonna s remove the motor. I think the motor goes out at this time. Let's just remove this motor. Yep. See the screws isolated because it would contact both sides of the frame. This is that that black washer isolates this screw from the rest of the frame. If uh, if the two frame halves should touch each other, then you have a short circuit, and that would be bad. But I think the motor just comes out. Or if it doesn't come out, it's close to coming out. And then I'll loosen this up. Loosen up the frame on both sides. And let's see what we got. These are just the plastic uh, screws from the other side. No big deal. And then that should open up. Nice and easy. Important to note, all these screws, they all have isolators the same way. That's a lot of grease. I'm just going to wipe this with my rag. I don't have to remove all of it and then the motor should come out it only has one uh, bearing and there's a little uh, gear here too 
that you have to not lose the second gear here that you have to not lose but everything seems to be uh, in good shape as far as I'm concerned so that's what I do I'll test out the motor and then I'll add each part one at a time so I know which part was causing me issues. I'm gonna make a mark on the motor so that I know uh, which way is up and which way is down. So that should be up. And then if you, sp if you put your motor back, if you put your motor back this way, it'll go backward when it's supposed to be forward and it'll go forward when it's supposed to be backward. That happens to you, you have an engine that's backwards like that, just slip the motor around and that will fix that. So let's try that on the bench. I don't foresee any problems there. Usually backmans, the motors, they're always good. Oh yeah, it's fabulous. I'm on a low setting here. So the motor's 100%. Doesn't even need to be lubricated. It's like this engine wasn't run much. So I'm not doing anything to this. I'm going to clean everything before I put it back together. I like the uh, the design of the wheels. It's pretty uh, standard for a steam engine to look like that. But um, it's decent detail. This engine is all right. I don't hate it. Actually, I'm spending all this time to convert it to DCC and sound, so... I hope I like it. A lot of them you buy on eBay, uh, they don't run. So I wash it with my rag, I clean it with my rag. And a lot of these engines issue is a power pickup. So that's very important. Like I said, it picks up some power from the tender, but it's not very significant. It's still good to have the extra. It needs the little bit extra. It could use more. Uh, Backman has some excellent, excellent tenders that pick up electricity from all eight wheels. If you have the money to buy one and, and uh, put it on this engine, it will help for sure. And this one, I don't remove the, uh, the rods. I just clean it like that. It doesn't really take more time. So then I'll wash it with my toothbrush. Now before I start washing everything, I just wanted to see uh, the motor running in the frame. So it runs very good. At this point, I will bring the wheels back in again. Now there's two tabs under here that uh, help the uh, engine pick up power from the track. So I'll be careful to have these behind the wheels. I'm not going to say very important, but it's good to have them in place. And then bring in the other wheel. And then the, the number one driver, I'll just leave it like that for now. Also, take note that there's timing to these. So, I think I will put this one uh, standing up. They should be a quarter turn apart, which they are from one side to the other side. So I'll put this one up straight, put this one up straight also. It's important to take your time to do that, to do it right, get the timing right. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Let's check to see if the other side is good. The other side, actually, not quite a quarter turn there. That's important to be exact. Look at that. This has to be 100% exact. I'm going to fool around with it for a minute. Now because the front axle does not have a gear, it's not as major, but uh, these two, they have to be 100%. So 
So these two, they have to be good together. All right, I'm gonna put the little cap back with its two screws. Just uh, tighten these up. Doesn't have to be super tight, just uh, hand tight. Just so they stop turning. And then we'll put some power to it and we'll see what it's like. Now to convert this to DCC, I have to uh, take it apart again. So I'm not going to put all the, um, the valve gear on just yet. But I will go try it on the track like that. Just so I can be sure that I'm happy with the way it runs. Cattle's not going out of business uh, anytime soon, but it's still fun to see uh, a locomotive like that come back to life. Now that I got it working perfectly, I can take it apart again to do the DCC conversion. Also, I'm going to be painting at the shell right now at an early stage. Look at that. The good details on that is it's got uh, separately applied handrails. You know, some of the model power uh, engines don't have that. So that's pretty good. And I'm going to open the, uh, the headlight because I'm going to put an LED in there. I've got to work on the tender. Look at all that paint on the wheels. I'm going to use uh, some brake fluid to get that out. Pretty much the best way. So I have to take this apart while I'm using the brake fluid to get the uh, get the paint off the wheels. I'll be uh, painting the top of the shell. It's a, it's a two-step process. I have to use um, a black shiny black paint put on the decals and then I'll put on um, then I'll put on the doll coat it's very very small uh, copper strip here that helps uh, pick up electricity for the engine it's not super significant but it needs uh, all the help it can get, to be honest. That part too, it doesn't seem to have paint on it, so that's good. I'm going to inspect it carefully under magnification. The screws, they can just stay here for now. And then this tender is where I'll put my decoder and my speaker. I usually don't, but on this case I might uh, open up a little bit of space under here to put up my uh, my speaker. I don't know if I can. If I, I don't know if it makes a big difference to let sound through, but you know, since I've got it in my hands, it would be the perfect time to do that. This one didn't get so much paint, but it's going to go in the brake fluid anyhow, just to be on the safe side. And that looks like a little white. Uh, I'll decide maybe later if I keep it or not. Probably will keep it. And then this number five here, I'm not sure what that does. Maybe that's from the factory. I don't need that anymore. This is plastic, so there's no conductivity. But that's, uh, that's going to get painted. And I'm going to open up the, uh, the headlight for the, for the back headlight. That, let's say you get an engine that doesn't have a headlight like this. You can use uh, just a little bit of tubing to make the headlight. So what I do is I'll make a hole for the headlight, go straight through the back, then make another hole in the tender to pass the wire through. Also, I'm going to open up this area here so I can fit all my wiring. 
Yeah, I'm going to use the Dremel with a cutoff wheel. I'm going to open this up. So that's going to give me tons of room uh, to pass my wires through here and when you're looking from the side it's nearly uh, invisible from the top it's 100 percent invisible the uh the shell here that is not a problem i don't have to change anything just have to poke the hole uh, for my headlight if you don't have a jeweler's drill like this get yourself one i use it all the time and it's not very expensive. On the front headlights, I can use a 1 16th uh, drill, which is the smaller, smallest drill you can get uh, from the hardware store. I'm gonna poke the hole through the back with a smaller drill because I don't need the hole that big to fit my wires through. And then with a 1.2 millimeter bit, I'll go through all the way. And so this, yeah, I don't, not too crazy about the way the other guy did the uh, the silver on this, and also the um, the walkways, the uh, they could be black. That would be better. However, uh, the cab numbers, I'm gonna keep those. So my wires are going to come out the back. I get a lot of inspiration from uh, Daniel Cordopassi. He does really, really fine work. Then I just poke it through. And then I'll go uh, through the bottom here just to hide my wires. I'm going to work on that a little bit off camera because I have to start the hole properly. I ended up coming in through the bottom because the concave nature of the shell, it just centered it for me. So that made it pretty easy. So my wires are going to go through that hole and then be hidden for the rest. I do the same thing for the shell. I'll drill it straight through for the rear shell. I'll drill it straight through. Custom painting a steam engine is pretty easy. Uh, you just paint everything black and then uh, add uh, some decals and some dull coat and you're done. You could even do it without the dull coat. You know, you get an engine that looks freshly shopped. Although with steam engines, I don't know if you can imagine, but they get dirty pretty quick. This one, I think I'm going to start it from this end. And then that's it. Be ready for painting. I'm just going to double check the... Um, the spacing for my decoder just to make sure I have enough room in there but uh, that looks good I think I would put the speaker over here and then the rest of the decoder should have a little bit of room maybe I'll remove that post here I haven't decided 100% that holds uh, my truck in place of course but maybe I can remove that post and keep the bit uh, that holds it together and then put my decoder in there then there's plenty of room to get my wires out that should work out get the wires out that way 
put the speaker in on the bottom. It's still a small-ish tender for what I need. It's a good thing I'm test fitting everything. That weight has got to go. That takes up way too much space. It's gonna fit in there, but I needed to remove 100%. Uh, needed to remove the weight and I had to make a sli slight indentation in the bottom but that is all going to work out in the end I am going to make some hole for the speaker in here some um, yeah, some small holes for the speaker to let the sound out. This is exactly how my decoder is going to fit in the tender. I poked some holes uh, for the speaker. And that will go in there nice and tidy. Now I can paint this. More and more, I'll take a regular piece of cardboard and some uh, regular masking tape and that will hold uh, my engine for painting. So while my paint is drying, it actually came out uh, very well. Paint came out very well, very pleased with that. So the, while that's drying, I'm gonna go over a little bit of theory. So here you have the front of the engine and your wheels, and then the motor. So all you got to do is put your decoder in between that, the red and black, and the gray and orange, and then uh, you're converted to DCC. And by the way, if you have an engine like that, these are already pre-wired for you. I really like these boxes. I think uh, they add value. I keep all my collection in the original boxes all the time and uh, it's actually very pleasurable to get the engine in and out of this box. So I'm just going to remove uh, the tender. It's just these two screws over here. Just to show you uh, that these are pre-wired for DCC so these were offered in either a DC or a DCC so they always built them uh, pre-wired for DCC the only thing is there's no wire for the lights on these just uh, slip the shell off very gently So there you go, everything is pre-wired for you, to get the weight out of the way, I'll bring it in closer so you can see. I'll just refocus my camera there, it needs a little help. So you have the red and black, you have the black wire here. And then the red wire here coming in from the track and then the gray wire and the orange wire that go to your motor so uh, all the hard work is done for you so now uh, I'm gonna go to work uh, on my 060 I decided to keep the number uh, on the cab I just thought that that would be a uh, really neat and then we'll check out the other one perfect now I have to make this with this first of all I'm going to set the uh, decoder in the tender it fits uh, pretty tight in there. I'm going to use a little piece of double sided tape and I'm going to glue the speaker to the circuit board. This will um, avoid because the speaker is metallic. 
this will avoid uh, short circuits from that and also it's going to help me set everything in place I ran into some trouble I had to resolder these two connections for the speaker and uh, I hope I sure hope I did it right because I was fiddling around too much with the wires trying to set it up in there at any rate now it's done so I'm going to use the double sided tape that fits just perfectly over the little holes that I made so that is pretty solid there now I have to mate it to um, I'm going to start by mating it to the motor so what I got to do is I got to isolate all this stuff with that Kapton tape and essentially I have to take it apart again to do that this is where your motor sits. I'm going to want the wire to go on this shelf here, which is basically uh, the cab window. This little tab, what it does, it helps the motor contact the frame. So that's going to go. I'm going to keep the little screw uh, for another project. But this tab is going to go. Actually, I'll keep them together because you never know. Do the exact same thing for the other side. So I'll put some on the side here. And also I'll put some uh, on the bottom. Although the motor has little plastic insulation on the bottom, I'm still going to make a double shirt. This plastic insulation stays. That helps you out. I buttoned uh, my tender back up. You can see all the wires sticking out. Now I've got plenty of wires to mate uh, to my motor. It's the orange and the gray, of course. Last time I did a conversion, I put the gray on top. I think I'm going to try that just to see if I've got the correct uh, polarity and then I'm going to use these tabs here to uh, as a connecting point to solder my uh, my wires to uh, to the motor and um, I have got got to be careful because this is plastic I've got all this plastic here so I have to be careful not to melt this at the same point I want to solder my wires up on here so let's see how that goes I managed to solder it all together without melting at the commutator so that's good news I've got my motor buttoned up in the frame so things are moving forward I want to set up the black and red wires the track feed and I'm gonna be opportunistic here and I'm going to use this little screw if I can find the right screwdriver for it and that will allow me to contact the track uh, very well I'll just bring in my black wire because this is the fireman side it's the um, the black side and I'm just going to loop it around here I'm going to loop it around the little screw and that will make an excellent contact And then on the engineer side, I could wire it directly uh, to the little brass pin. So that's going to look like the water pipe that takes um, water from the tender to the injector. So that worked out great. Then on the engineer side, it's a little messier. 
because I have to still hook up the positive for my LEDs but that's enough to test it I'm gonna put the wheels back on and we're gonna go test it I still have to work out some bugs uh, my wirings interfering with the engine but the motors working the drivers are turning and the sounds working So I'm making forward progress, that's good. After some fine tuning, I was able to get it to run okay. After a lot of fine tuning and testing, I finally got it to where I'm happy with it. One thing I'm always trying to improve is uh, managing these wires because I end up with a mess of wires. So part of that is making the wires as short as possible. So uh, I'm still working on that. Now um, I got the engine running the way I want. I want to add uh, my lights now. These are the LEDs I like to buy. 0603 white. Order them 12 volt with resistors very important now again they give me too much too long a wire so what i have to do i have to uh, undo this resistor and then shorten the wire you can see the resistor is on the plus side so that goes that's going to go to my black wire here it's going to go to the black wire here on uh, the track feed so i have to work something out for that now I just gotta run these tiny tiny little wires. I just gotta run them through my hole that I made uh, previously. And then also I run them down the hole for, my, for the boiler. And uh, I do lose patience sometimes, just like I'm human, just like the rest of you. But uh, at the same time, it is kind of fun to do uh, ultra small details from time to time. I am making a big effort to make everything look uh, neat, but uh, well, it is what it is. So this is a red wire connects to my uh, my black wire that brings power from the track. So it goes to the resistor, and then to the two positives for my LEDs. So one goes to the front. And then the other one goes to the back for the rear headlight. So let's test it out. So front headlight. Yay! That is actually really cool. That's why I go through all this extra effort. Hours of fun. Then let's check out the back headlight. Reverse direction. Yay! That guy be light. That is really neat. Cool stuff. Now I've got to button everything back out. Oh, also uh, all my connections are bare. So uh, that's not good. I like to test them out before I put insulation on because that way I can go back and desolder everything. But uh, since everything's working, I'm happy. I'm going to have to insulate all the connections. I bought this from the hardware store, a liquid tape. So uh, my first time trying it, it was a little pricey, but uh, I think that bottle's going to last me for quite a few engines. My first time uh, using this stuff. How long do you think it takes uh, before it dries? Of course, uh, I gotta play with it <laughs> while it dries. Just has to be done. I 
I'm going to fool around with the uh, the bell sounds and the um, the uh, whistle sound in the meantime while that dries. I don't know what that sound is. Maybe it's the auger or something like that. They have a bunch of extra sounds. I chose uh, chose this bell type. Uh, sounds better to me. It's uh, yep. That's what I like best. So this is the horn I picked. Sounds pretty good to me. There's uh, 13 possible horns. They're all um, eh, not that great, but this one's okay. I think it's dry enough now. I'm gonna put the uh, the tender shell back on, and then we'll see if it can uh, work a little bit. It will still stall here and there. But uh, it's coming together. I'm still going to do some uh, fine tuning. That is quite a show at night. Well, it's running pretty good now. So I suppose I should give it some couplers and throw a few cars behind it. As far as couplers go, I decided to go uh, with micro trains. So I'll just glue this in place uh, like that. Nothing too fancy. Uh, these are the couplers I'm using. So these work really good. Wow, this engine has changed quite a bit since I started. And now it's time to run some trains. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly had fun making it for you. See you soon.